What's up, everybody? I'm the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and I have never lost a street fight. This is technically true, I guess. I mean, I have, in fact, never been in a street fight, or even in a self-defense situation. The only time that I've actually ever fought with someone outside of the dojo, it was with a friend, and we were specifically sparring against each other to kind of like test our styles out against each other. But who cares about all that context? I can safely say that I am undefeated on Hashtag Distreets. One of the most common reasons that people start practicing karate is for self-defense. Honestly, this is true of most martial arts that don't actively involve weapons. Not everybody's looking to step in the ring or the cage and compete, and many people have day jobs that wouldn't take too kindly on them coming into work with a black eye or with their arm in a sling because of what they chose to do for their workouts in their off time. There are definitely a few people who started martial arts more because it's a trendy way of getting a workout in, but the whole reason that it got trendy in the first place is because it's supposedly a workout that teaches you real-life skills. Except for Tai Chi. I doubt most of the people in the park doing their slow Tai Chi think that they're actually learning self-defense. I'm so sorry to all of the Tai Chi Chuen practitioners who actually practice it as a martial art. Now, it goes without saying that there is just so much bad self-defense advice out there. Go watch Ramsey Dewey or McDojo Life if you want to see just some of the most choice examples of the absolute worst self-defense out there on the market. But I'm not here to talk about bad self-defense. I'm here to talk about good self-defense. Nay, the best self-defense that there could ever be. But first, before I tell you what the best self-defense is, I have to tell you what it is not. Let's be real with ourselves. People are just the worst judges of what is actually dangerous or likely to happen. For example, wrist grabs, while they do definitely occasionally happen, are comparatively very rare in self-defense situations or in street fights. Yet, so many karate dojos teach escape from wrist grab as one of their very first self-defense techniques, and rarely, if ever, deal with the additional context that the other free hand is probably trying to do something like a collar grab, or a strike to your face. Wrist grab escapes are taught first not because they're a particularly likely situation or because they're even a high percentage technique, but because they're one of the easiest techniques to actually teach, and because if you practice them with a compliant partner, they can make even a beginner feel like a total badass. Another great example is this comic from Saturday Morning Breakfast Cereal, which I know isn't actually evidence of anything, but I think it's pretty demonstrative of what I'm trying to talk about. So, you see, there's this lady, and she's talking about how she refuses to fly on planes because of the danger of terrorism. But what's this? In the next panel, she says she'll text someone an article about it. On her phone. While she's driving. Of course, statistically, you're much more likely to die in an automobile accident than in a plane crash, and that's accounting for all of the various reasons why a plane might crash. The general population risk for dying in an automobile accident is about 1 in 8,000, Whereas, for plane crashes, it rests more at around 1 in 2 million. There are a few links in my sources that talk a little bit more about distracted driving and plane crashes, but I think that I've made my point with this one. In fact, in terms of learning self-defense, us karateka really just love to string together these ridiculous hypothetical what-if situations. Ted Gambardella's book, A Hundred Deadliest Karate Moves, is a great, if very cringy, example. Take a look. You are standing by your car, ready to get in, when an attacker with a crowbar tries to kill you. You are getting into your car with your wife, when two thugs attack you with a crowbar, trying to kill you. A woman is walking down the street, when a would-be rapist grabs her. You are at the cash wash, when two men jump you and manage to grab you, and one manages to get you into a bear hug. Now... I don't know, maybe I've just lived a pampered life in the lap of luxury and perfect security, but I've never had any of these things happen to me. I've never even heard of them happening to anyone. And not just because cash washes have largely gone the way of the VHS. For some reason, all of these situations start with the assumption that the violence was pretty much unavoidable, and that there was nothing you could have done to recognize it beforehand or prevent it, and also that strangers are just you know, always carrying around crowbars for uh, passerby murdering purposes. But let me ask you, how likely are you really to need to defend yourself? I'll admit, 
My never having had to defend myself is as much a function of luck as anything else. And, you know, look at me, I'm tall, I'm athletic, I have a pathological aversion to having any more than one of my earbuds in at a time. I'm not exactly the perfect target. But why spend all of your time training for a type of danger that's already relatively rare and getting rarer by the year? Maybe, instead of training to deflect the crowbars of would-be murderers, we should instead focus on training for the most dangerous, common situation of them all. Slipping and falling. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, without a doubt, 100% the most effective self-defense technique that you will ever learn in your life is break falls. Like I said, I've never been assaulted, but I can't even begin to count the number of times that I've slipped on black ice, or skidded out while I was running, or just had a momentary brain fart and planted my butt straight on the ground. Hell, I've never broken a bone, but the closest that I've ever come was the few times that I crashed my bike headlong in the street, even at one point tearing the ligament on my right thumb. That sucked, but I'll admit I much prefer having a torn thumb to breaking my entire face on the asphalt, and the potential asphalt burn that I could have gotten just all over my head would have been much more painful and inconvenient than simply wearing a cast for six weeks. Break falling, also known as ukemi in Japanese, is just a useful skill, hands down. The natural human reaction to falling is to try and protect your head, and that's a good instinct since your head is where your brain lives, and you kind of need your brain to live. However, the problem is, if you don't know how to take a fall right, you'll probably end up messing up your arms, or your legs, or just simply failing to protect your head. Honestly, the danger of that kind of slipping and falling is really the main reason why hockey players, and I guess football players as well, wear all those pads and helmets. But in normal life, you can't really walk around with a helmet on all the time. Unless you're that Mandalorian guy I've heard so much about. This isn't going to be a video where I teach you how to break fall. There are so many better videos for that already, and I'm going to link at least a few of them in my description and probably throw one up in a card right about now. This video is going to be me trying to convince other karateka that break falling is a skill that they need to learn, because for some strange reason, I've seen an unthinkable number of people, and any number of people is unthinkable, say that it's just not a skill that they need. Which, you know, I don't get that at all. Their argument usually is something like the exact opposite of the argument that you hear a lot of BJJ practitioners make, which is that 70% of fights end up on the ground. A lot of self-defense experts, especially for some reason karateka, simply say something like, oh, well, going to the ground is really dangerous and it puts you in a bad position, their friends are going to come and stomp all over your head, so I just teach to avoid going to the ground. Which, like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> there are two reasons why you don't want to go to the ground. Because being thrown hurts, and because being on the ground is a super vulnerable position, especially if the other person isn't on the ground. The problem is, you can't always prevent yourself from going to the ground. Break falls will help you both with the pain of getting thrown and with the danger that comes with being on the ground. If you're in pain because you broke your arm, or if you just thwacked your head against the pavement and got knocked out cold, you're not going to be able to do the second most important thing when it comes to any ground exchange. Just stand back up. More than that, though, let's be honest, falling is just the most realistic and likely type of danger that you're ever going to face. Like I said earlier, you can trip and fall without even being in a fight. That on its own already makes break falling a much more useful skill than basically anything that you'll ever learn as a self-defense technique, but there is also the real danger of tripping, or being shoved, or being thrown in an actual fight as well. One thing that recent, incredibly tragic news about attacks on elderly Asian people in New York City, for instance, has shown us, is that some people's fighting strategy is to just try and push you over. Being pushed, or tripped, or bumped into is so much more of a realistic scenario than single-handed wrist grab, and honestly, breakfalls aren't even that hard to learn anyway. There are so many ways that you can knock a person over that almost all scuffles result in one or both people being thrown to the ground. Like those BJJ guys said, 70% of fights end on the ground. But okay, okay, maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you don't like to teach or practice breakfalls because they're not traditional. This way of thinking probably comes from that school of thought that says that since we call these techniques stances, that means that 
we can't ever use any footwork and we have to stand 100% flat-footed all of the time. Uh, but okay, whatever. Well, let's just take a look at Okinawan Goju Ryu 2 by Toguchi Seikishi Sensei. That's a pretty traditional source of information and, well, what do you know, he's got an entire chapter on Ukemi. The book only really includes a sidefall, but to be fair, the book is also intended as a supplement, not a substitute for real training, and doesn't include 100% of the techniques. In fact, if you spend just a few minutes searching for it on Google or here on YouTube, you'll find dozens of tutorials of karateka teaching ukemi, some of whom are from more modern or recent styles, but many of whom are from styles that are as old as Okinawa Prefecture. But wait, that also might not be the reason why you don't want to learn ukemi. Maybe you focus primarily on sport karate, and since kumite, especially WKF kumite, is fought standing up, you think that you don't really need to learn how to fall properly. So, to counter that, here's a compilation of ashibarai or other takedowns being used in WKF kumite. Okay, I am running out of reasons why someone might not want to practice ukemi. You get the point by now. There's no reason for you not to want to learn breakfalls, unless you already know them, and even then you should keep learning. Be like judo practitioners, and do ukemi every day. Practice them all of the time. Practice them in line at the grocery store. Actually, don't do that. Um, don't... Don't practice them in line at the grocery store. Practice them at home, in the gym. Breakfalls will save your life, or at the very least, save you a little bit of pain and maybe even some humiliation. And of course, you are much more likely to have to use a breakfall than you are to be assaulted by a thug with a crowbar. Probably. Thanks for watching me basically explain why I'm annoyed that I didn't learn breakfalls earlier. This video was half inspired by Art of One Dojo's recent video about ground fighting, and half inspired by me slipping on my own sweat during shadow boxing and just eating it on the wood floor of this room a few weeks ago. If you enjoyed it, well, first off, go and practice your ukemi, but then come back here and like the video, and leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite non-combat technique that you learned for self-defense is. While you're down there, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel, and since I'm going to be making many more new videos, that is a good investment. And hey, why don't you even turn on notifications, so you can know when I upload new stuff. I've been the Gojiru Philosopher, and don't forget to hit the ground running. I make dad jokes at the end of my videos, because why not, okay? Ted Gambardella's book, 100 Deadliest Karate Moves, is a Bad book. It's a bad book.